So, Chris, we saw the stuff on the um, graph there. I mean, what does all that mean? I mean, does it make a difference in terms of power, drivability? Uh, what? I mean, you, you know, you saw the slot style. It looked like it had a lot of highs and lows in it. The tonsil style looked a little better. And then the Pro M80 looked better than them all. It had a straight line right. with a filter on it. Right. Why? What does it mean? It, it's Again, it's, it's just the stability of the voltage signal that's coming from the mass airflow meter and being provided to the processor. Um, again, I don't want to say that the slot style sensor is bad. It's, it's, it's not. That uh, what you saw on the graph there is actually fairly normal. And... Um, you know, the, the truth is that it has more to do with the quality of the processor that you're using and its ability to use that signal than it, than it does about the meter. Um, but the, the better the meter signal, uh, the easier time the processor has, and the better your drivability is going to be. Okay. All right, Chris. In the video, I know we talked about reversion before, and um, you mentioned in the, in the video that um, some of these meters... Uh, uh, handle the reversion a little bit better. So uh, let's talk about the tonsil and the slot style first. Well, the way the, the slot style sensor and the tonsil sensor handle reversion is virtually the same. Air enters through the front. It, uh, it comes out here on the tonsil. I'm sorry, on the slot. On the tonsil sensor, it comes out here. I mean, it enters here. It comes out the bottom. The idea being that when air is coming forward, it enters and comes out. When air is going this way, it really doesn't do anything. So you can see, I mean, they, they both doing approximately the same thing. Okay. Then what about got, the... Go ahead. When you, got the, when you look at the Pro M80, you'll see that there's really nothing in the air path at all. Um, the sensor is actually on a passage on the side, uh, outside of the, uh, of the air path. So when air comes through this way, it, uh, a portion of it enters through this tube, and uh, the air going through the opening of the housing draws a vacuum on this groove that's in here. And uh, that's how the sensor gets its reading. Um, and because it's filtered from any turbulence in the air path, that's why we have a much better signal. Um, the other thing, of course, is as far as reversion goes, you know, air that's going back through this way simply isn't red at all. All right. This is... <laughs> this is a question that keeps coming up. Nine-point and 30-point transfer function. We keep talking about it. Chris... What do you do differently that, um, I, guess, I guess, from your competitors? Transfer functions are actually generated on the flow bench. When we give you, people often ask, why are you guys charging 50 bucks for a 30-point transfer function? Uh, you know, your competition gives it away for free. Well, the difference is, when we do a 30-point transfer function, that transfer function is generated on the flow bench with your mass airflow meter. It is absolutely accurate for your mass airflow meter. Nobody else does that. Our competition is giving you a transfer function that is generated on an Excel spreadsheet. And basically what they do is they take a generic transfer function. Uh, you enter in a uh, new injector size. It does some math to the original transfer function and generates a new one. It does not represent what your mass airflow meter outputs. That's it? So, you know, it's easy to give one away for free when all you're doing is putting up a spreadsheet on your, on your website. It takes time to generate a 30-point transfer function on a flow bench. So you're doing yours on a flow bench. So your 9-point is, can I say it's more accurate than the competition's 30-point? By a long shot. The 9-point doesn't have as many points of flow, but at least it's correct. It's correct. And you can take that 9-point and extrapolate it out to 30-point if you want to. Okay. Right? Uh, if you wanted to go through the work. Or, again, you can pay us 50 bucks. We'll generate. It, it's actually a 37-point transfer function that we generate on the flow bench, and it is absolutely correct. When you're tuning, uh, there are enough variables in your calibration. We don't want our mass airflow meter to be one of those variables. Look, mass airflow meter is the single most important sensor in the entire management system. It's the single most Im important component, period, next to the ECM. Okay. I don't want, you know, I, I, do I really want to save 100 bucks on a mass airflow meter and end up with something that doesn't have as good a signal? I don't. And neither do I. When I'm tuning, do I want to use a generic transfer function that really doesn't represent my mass airflow meter and, and have one more variable in my calibration that I need to try to account for? Absolutely not. It's, it's simply not worth it. It's 50 bucks. 
and it's 50 bucks it's going to make a world of difference in the way this thing runs all right there you go nine point versus 30 point and this is why pro m charges you 50 bucks all right thanks a lot chris appreciate it